What's up guys, Joey here. So, I've been playing Cyberpunk since it launched and I've been through all the mods, you know, trying to improve the vehicle handling and there were all these edits and things like that and now Cyberpunk is getting really popular again with 1.6 and the Edge Runners uh, show that came out. And I jumped back into Cyberpunk, you know, like, I haven't been playing it and I looked up, like I tried playing the game again just driving and to be honest, the handling is pretty good. It's improved way more than when the game first released but there is still an issue especially on PC where W is max throttle and your only options for slowing down say you're coming up to a corner is you've either got to let go of acceleration which doesn't sound natural at all like you're coasting or you've got to press S to slow down abruptly or spacebar to, to brake and basically there's a lack of fine control and I was looking up mods how do I fix this and there's all the mods that mentioned driving for 1.6 there's nothing really updated or the descriptions are really vague and I found a mod for 1.5 that still works because it's just input mapping like editing the controls right that are built into the game there's actually files you can edit but for the average user that can be intimidating like you look at all oh, your editing game files and it's just a turn off like you don't want to do that and basically I took that mod and in the comments for that mod there was actually someone mentioning hey there's a better way to do this you can use this mod and that like these two other mods that basically let you input custom controls and it inputs them without editing the base game files so you don't have to go in and edit an xml or anything but basically i just wanted to share how to do it and how the mod works so that you guys can look oh does this look good just skip forward in this video if you just want to see it working if you already know how to install mods if you don't know how to install mods I'm just going to quickly explain how to do that so first you're going to need a extracting program for because all the new mods uh, as of the latest cyberpunk update a lot of them broke when using Nexus mods uh, custom like mod installer and most will have a mod manager download option which is an automatic option but the one that works properly, like that's easy to use, at least on my end, is manual download, which just downloads the mod file and you've just got to place it in the right location. And it's actually very simple as long as you have the base clue, like an idea of how to how to do that. So first you need an extracting program. You've probably heard of it, like WinZip, things like that. Uh, one of the best archive extracting programs I found on Windows 10 and 11 is 7-Zip because it's really fast and functional. And basically, uh, go to this website. I'll link all the stuff in, in the comments in the description. Go to download at 64-bit. Uh, that's the one that basically anyone on PC should be on anyway, uh, is you'll be using a 64-bit version of Windows. And download and install that file. And then you'll have, it'll just integrate into your OS, basically. It'll integrate into your file system. And then after that, go to... First, you, you need these two dependencies for the driving mod to work. And basically what they are is they add extended functionality into the game. So they, they're kind of their own mods, but you can add other mods that work with them, kind of. They load other mods. So um, anyway, you can read the descriptions and the way to install a mod, this goes for all mods, any mod that you're installing on, on, on Cyberpunk, is you go to Nexus Mods, you find a mod you like, and you go to the description page and if it's a good mod it'll have a requirement section and anything needed and if i click requirements it shows mods that need this mod to work so this is actually a very heavily used mod like it's a dependency type mod and what that means is that this mod enables more mods to work properly um, and function you know basically none of these mods here that have been uploaded and shared on nexus mods will work without red 4 extension so it's a script extender basically like and you don't need to know what a script is or anything like that it's just the main thing you need to know is that this mod is important for other mods to work okay and then you go to the file section and click manual download and it'll come up with if you're if you don't have like a premium account just use a slow download it's still pretty good it's only one megabyte whatever um 500 kilobytes half a megabyte is this download and it'll have you know countdown and then what i recommend is navigate to your game directory and you can see here for me at the top it is c drive program files steam steam apps common cyberpunk 2077 uh, you might have it on epic games or uh, gog you might have like a different install pad but you just go to this pc whichever drive you installed cyberpunk from uh, on hopefully you remember and just navigate to it you know like find your find your way and whatever installer you use whatever installer program 
and common and see I find it here. And then what I recommend doing is before you go in there, just quickly right click and you should have an option somewhere for pin to quick access. And what that does is whenever you're modding or if you're just happening to go into File Explorer and you're looking for your game folder because you want to extract your mod or whatever, it'll be here in the quick access on the left and you can just click uh, and that's my game folder. So you can see the address at the top. And I'm, I, I am doing this in ultra wide for 4K quality, but I'm explaining it. So even if you can't see the exact directory, like it looks a bit small text, don't worry about that. You just need to know the general idea. So I've pinned that to quick access and then I'm gonna go into the folder. And this is the base game directory where it's Cyberpunk 2077. And if you can see archive bin and R6, that is the root directory of Cyberpunk. And that's where you wanna be. So when you save a mod, you want to save it into this root directory. It makes it easier to install the mod. Okay, so I've got Red4 extension here that I wanted to download. I'm going to save that. And then after it's downloaded, like I'm using Brave browser, but it should be fairly consistent across most browsers. When you've got a download done, you'll have like a little more options button and you can click show in folder and it'll jump to wherever you saved it, which is the main cyberpunk directory. So show in folder and now we've, we've just suddenly appeared there. And then find the mod and you've got 7-zip installed, right? And first you want to make sure that the mod has its root folders set up properly. Because some mods will just give you the mod file and you've got to put it in the right folder. But if it's a good mod, when you check the archive, which is you left click it instead of right click it. So double left click it to open the archive. 7-zip will show you what's inside the download archive. So basically all the mods come in archive packages, which is just like a compressed package of the mod files. And we're just viewing them right now. So as you can see in here, bin and red 4 x which is the extension mod, but bin is a root directory folder. So in other words, if you look in your Cyberpunk 2070 folder, you'll see there's actually a folder named bin. That means this mod has got all its folder paths built into the archive package, meaning you do not have to manually search for where to put these files. They're already in the right place. So if I right click and extract here to this file that we downloaded, the Red4 extension, it will automatically place all the necessary files in the correct folder paths uh, where the game needs them, okay, where the mod needs them. So I could basically right click Red4 extension, 7-zip, and don't worry about all these other buttons, you just want to extract here, and that will put them in the right place so that they'll work, okay? And it's the same thing for input loader, which is input loader, one of input loader's requirements is Red4 extension and input loader basically lets you easily add input files which modify controls without messing with your original controls. So if your original controls are like mapped to whatever buttons and do whatever, this will add the modifications of a set of inputs. For example, my immersive driving mod, it will add them in without you having to go in and edit controls. So it'll just automatically add them in. So anyway, same procedure, you go to files, manual download, and you see it'll tell you, you need Red4 extension for this to work. We've already installed that, you know, we've extracted it to our main drive and then download it. And once that file saves, you know, choose your Cyberpunk main directory as I've just explained. And you see we've got Red4 extension there. You can delete the uh, archive file once you've extracted it. So, you know, after you've done right click extract here, you can then delete because it's already in, inside your game folders. It makes a copy in like it takes it out and you know copies it into your game folders then we've got input loader which we can double click it make sure it's got the file path and it goes into red4 extensions folder which we just we just installed right so we can see red4 extension folders there that means we can right click this 7-zip extract here and that will put it into the correct folder so i don't actually need to extract that if i go into red4 extension you can actually see where it went it went into plugins and there's a input loader option here Okay, so that's one of the mods, and you'll see that a lot of the best mods will will use Red4 extension, or they'll use input loader, they'll use other things. So anyway, we've installed those two dependencies. That's the main part of installing this control enhancement for vehicles, uh, immersive driving, and then go into you know my immersive driver. I haven't actually published this yet. I'm making this video first, but we can see the mod page, and you know I put in a description because that's what all the driving mods were missing. And if we go into files, I've tried to order it. It's all the same actual modification, but the slight difference is one of them is for controllers or two of them are for controllers. So if you like the way that turning works in the current version of the game, when you press left and right and the way that the car handles, if you do not have a problem with turning, use the default turning option. 
So that does not affect turning. So default turning behavior. And if you don't like the turning, if your turning is like, it doesn't feel good, it feels a bit slow, then use just the immersive driving 1.6 or the immersive driving 1.6 controller. Now I put untested for the controller ones because even though I believe they're the right mappings, uh, it'll use your right triggers and right shoulder buttons, left and right shoulder buttons and your triggers. Um, I don't actually have a controller, like the last controller I had was a cheap one that broke. So I can't actually test uh, that this works properly, but hopefully you guys can confirm for me in the post section, like just make a post and say it's working fine or not. And yeah, find the relevant one that you feel is good for you. And so for example, uh, I want the full modification. I want better turning and I want the acceleration deceleration that I've put in the description. Like if you read what the mod does, hopefully that's what drove you to this video. So manual download. And it tells you you need input loader and red for extension, which I just walked you through. And then slow download. And it's literally just a tiny, tiny XML file, but it does not mess with your existing controls. Meaning once you've installed this, as long as you know where it went, you can delete it and undo it straight away. Uh, you don't have to worry. It's not going to wreck your game or anything like that. So we're going to save it to the Cyberpunk root directory, Cyberpunk 2077. And then we're going to double check, is my file path correct? So if I, this is the, the download that you'll have. And it goes into R6 input and immersive driving .xml. So if that exists, like the one I'm using, R6 input immersive driving .xml. And that's actually what input loader will read. It'll take any file in here that messes with any controls and it will implement them into your game without wrecking your base control. So other controls that you've got won't get affected by this. It'll just merge them all together, unless they're duplicates. So you don't want to have another mod that affects driving that also affects your W key. Uh, you got to make sure you delete those extra inputs and just use one for driving. Um, and you can see I've got one for flying, but that's separate. It's got its own inputs. It's a separate mod. So anyway, immersive driving is in there. You can open the XML and take a look at what it's doing. And basically, it changes the values for acceleration to be slower so it'll accelerate more gradually and it gives you a modifier key for accelerate 2 which is a secondary accelerate option that is at the normal value because the normal value is actually like full acceleration uh, and that's where you want to have both you want to have a way to accelerate slowly and a way to pick up speed and then i've left the normal stopping button because everyone will, like your your muscle memory will be used to pressing s to slow down and basically, I've given you a button to gradually slow down, which is below the accelerate key. So shift is accelerate fast. Left control, just below it, is accelerate, decelerate, basically, slow down. And then we've got the uh, turning behavior, which just modifies it slightly from 1.0 to 1.3. Uh, and that's actually what was used in the immersive driving 1.5 mod, but that mod hasn't been updated. You know, the, uh, whoever created it uh, hasn't felt the need to, but I wanted to do this to give visibility because I think there are people looking for this type of mod. They just don't know that it exists. Uh, and the description does not even mention the way that it works, how it gives you downshifting, how it gives you better vehicle control. So anyway, you extract that there. And once that's installed, you can just launch your game and try driving. And if you want to change the keys, you know, I've got that all in the mod description. You can, you can go through there, um, back here somewhere. Just go to the description and I describe how to adjust your keys and there's a website with all the key bindings where if you want to change it to a different key, just copy and paste this paste bin link. And you can literally go, okay, I want to change it to, for example, your whatever key. Uh, these are all the different keys. You just have to make sure there's an IK in front of it. So letters, F keys, whatever, uh, whatever suits your fancy. You might want to use right shift instead of left shift, or you might even want to use your arrow buttons, um, which are somewhere in here. I hope they've, they've mentioned the arrows. Number pad, page up. I think arrow is just up, like IK up, literally. Um, so anyway, if you wanted to modify those, you just take those IK keys and replace whatever's in here. So if you wanted to change your accelerate key or the shift uh, modifier for picking up speed, you want it to be a different button, you change it, the L shift to a different key from this paste bin, like any, any key you want, okay? Just in case you're playing fully with keyboard, you don't even like touching your mouse when you drive. You might want to you might want to use um, accelerate up to go faster, for example. And you'd actually just take this up. Actually, it would, it would already work. Uh, it's already accelerate up is already under two keys, so you could. It's actually already got a little bit of dual key functionality. You've got two keys for 
different acceleration. And anyway, um, you can basically see what it's doing there. And if you wanted your, uh, for example, if you wanted your deceleration, uh, which is I, if you wanted to use IK down, which is using two hands on your keyboard, if you wanted IK down to function like left control, you just change the value of one because I didn't bother modifying that. Change that to 0 0.2 and that will give it deceleration. And then S will still be this slow down quickly. Um, so anyway, I'm going to demonstrate that now and hopefully you skip forward to this part of the video if you want to see what the mod actually does in action. And this is what it does. Um, first, I have to turn my volume down because I can't hear myself. You want to be able to hear the car motor, but I've also got... Let's just mute the uh, radio a little bit. Okay. So now, if I hold spacebar and I press W, this is... Uh, actually, not W. I'm going to use the normal sh acceleration, which is left shift now. Left shift is what the game does by default. And this is what the engine does. Uh, look in the bottom left where you've got the acceleration bar. And that's what it does. That's how quickly it accelerates. You cannot control that by pressing W. There's no button that lets you modify that by default on PC. Now, if I show you what it... With the 0 0.2 value on W now, I'm going to press W and this is what the motor does. See that? See how, see how it like creeped up slower? And as soon as it gets to the peak, that's basically an upshift. Uh, if you think about cars, you know, upshifting and downshifting. So now if I drive, this is how slowly I'll take off if I use the new value. So W, this is my W now. Seems a bit slow, right? And you might think that's too slow. But if I want to, I'll just stop here. If I want to take off faster, I can press W and then add shift to it. So like this, Wait, I'll go from a full stop, W, shift. Or alternatively, if that's a little bit too slow still, don't press W at all. If you want just the default, like you're, you're having a race, just press shift. Max throttle, right? So as you can see, you can kind of use your your own preference. You just have to get used to the buttons. But if I want to take off slowly, I can press W. If I want to start picking up speed a bit quicker, kind of like a adding acceleration, I can hold shift along with W. And then if I just want to take off from a full stop as quickly as possible, I'll just press shift. So you can see how quickly... Um, you can just hear the motor. It's, you can actually hear the difference that these controls are making. And if I... Another nice thing is that this is what happens when I try to go slowly with the default controls. So by default controls, I mean I'm just using the button that the defaults would have done. If I try to slow this down... So you can see I'm going at max speed. I want to slow down, right? My only options are to hold the S... And then I can't, like, I'll just suddenly slow down and stop, right? There's no actual motor noise, as in a real car. When you slow down, you, you gear down, right? There's no gearing down by default. So by default, it's this. And then if I want to slow down fast, I can also press space bar. That'll, that'll break. But that's not deceleration, right? Now, what we can do is once we've... And you can also see the car control. I'm using W here. So see how I was able to slowly turn around from a stop? If I was trying to do that on the default controls, it would look more like this. I'm trying to turn around, right? That's the best, like, you could tap it, but you can't slowly turn around. It's like max throttle turning all the time. So I'm trying to, like, tap it a bit, and I have, you know, like, it's just so hard. Now, now I'll show you the next part, um, which is pretty cool. If I'm driving slowly, I want to look at a view or something, and I want to still have motor noise without stopping the car because the acceleration doesn't happen as quickly like compared to this. Like this sounds really bad if I just use a normal acceleration. Like I'm trying to tap default acceleration, right? This is what it makes the car do. You'll hear this rrr, rrr, like it doesn't sound good. Hear that? That's me tapping accelerate by default, whatever the default um, 1.0 value was. Now, if I use W, and I'm going at, say, let's say I'm going at 50, I'll, I'll, I'll go up to 50, um, I don't know if that's kilometers per hour, miles per hour, I'll go up to 50. Now, if I want to maintain this speed, listen to the engine, I'm tapping W. Hear that? There is no revving, because I'm basically, it's like holding your foot at the same position on a pedal. 
instead of the normal behavior, which is this. And this what this is probably what annoyed some people too, is that they're trying to like go to steady speed, like cruise control, and you can't you can't tap forward by default. It'll do this weird um it'll do this. So default. See how the speed just keeps jumping up suddenly from me pressing shift? So shift is a default behavior. And now if I want to just maintain, say, 70, I can go up to 70 and then start tapping W. And because it's only on a 0.2 modifier, the engine will be very stable. Like it won't sound like it's suddenly revving up. I can cruise, basically. Hear that? So that's tapping W. And you can tap it faster, tap it slower, but long story short, it's not going to rev your engine like a crazy, like putting your foot on the gas type of thing. And then if I do want to pick up speed, like say I'm cruising along and then I suddenly want to go fast, then I can switch to ship. See that? And then I can go back to W. But you can see it won't hold the very top speeds because 0.2 acceleration value will only reach around 100 at best. You can see we're going down back to 100. This is just going back to W. But now here's the coolest part of this mod, um, or these con this controller behavior when you've modified the values, is so my S key, if I want to suddenly stop, my S key is still the same, right? I've got no downshifting by pressing S, which is reverse, basically. But with a 0.2 modifier on control for, for reversing, Watch what happens now. When I go full speed, bloody guy. Now I want to slow down naturally. Say that I'm going to stop up there at the sign, like uh, not this sign, but the the next sign, right? I want to stop there. Now instead of having to press spacebar or S, I can hold control, and the car will do this. Hear that? That is proper downshifting and. The huge difference this makes to driving is you can judge your distances better when the car engine makes the right noise. And it's kind of, it's it's weird that this is, functionality is built into the game when you use lower deceleration values, but there's no way to access it by default. So now I'm going to go fast, and then I'm going to go slow down. Hear that? It's doing it by itself, just from holding control. So you got to let go of accelerate, but it'll decelerate naturally. It is so good. So I'm going to go a bit fast now. And you just got to practice. Like, obviously play around, play with the shift, play with the control. But basically, when you want to stop, you do have to start slowing down in advance. That's normal driving. If there's somewhere you got to stop and, you know, you want to stop at the last minute, you're going you're gonna to spin out or you're going to crash if you have a sharp turn to make. Or it's just, you know, actually you can still do it if I wanted to turn there. But, you know, if you wanted that immersive driving experience, then just say I want to turn at this next barrier, I want to make a UE. I can use control, and I can also press S. Like, I can use them in conjunction with each other, so... I'll just show you up here. I'll go really fast, and let's just say I try to downshift, but I can't downshift quick enough, because the turn's coming up too quickly. I'm downshifting, and then I press S on top of the downshift and I get that I'm able to make my turn without crashing or spinning out. And you can see the way that I'm following him is a lot smoother. I don't have to spam W, I'm just letting go of it every now and then, and the car maintains a nice, you know, I can go 20. And if I try to do that with, with the default control, it's like this. <laughs> I have to keep tapping S to stop the car just taking off. And that turns everyone into like an aggressive driver if you cannot control the speed. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I hope this mod finds you well. Um, if you do find the turning is, is, is a bit too sharp, then just lower the value or go back to 1.0 or download the other modification file that does not affect the turning, and it'll just like extract it the same way, extract it into the main directory, and it will just write over the one that you, um, the one that you first downloaded. It'll just um, copy over it and just make sure your game's closed when you do so. Like, don't have your game running.
Stay here now. This is holding shift. And then I'm gonna gear down. Control. And go back to W, which is slower acceleration. Because I'm getting into traffic. Gear down again. Back up. Let go of W. Still coast a little bit because for the faster cars, coasting works well. And then pick up speed again. Let's just try this. Yeah, that's nice. When you use control combined with S, you can hear the downshifting really quick. And that happens in real life when you're suddenly trying to stop really fast and you're going a high speed in a manual. Um, even though we don't have full on manual gear stick controls, um, the fast downshifting is what people will do when they're suddenly coming up and they've got to slow down real quick. You can downshift from like a high gear to a, to a low gear, but just adding that noise in is nice. Alrighty guys, so this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm just going to leave you with a clip of highway driving and how the vehicle handles keeping up with the flow of the traffic because you know some cars go slower and sometimes there's built up areas and it is, for me, it is a very noticeable difference compared to the default uh, controls. So anyway, um, thanks for that and if you enjoy the mod or the video then please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.